Hello everyone, my name is Vid Katarta with Right Solution Realty. Uh, I'm actually driving and I have a very long commute to show some properties today, so I thought I'd answer some of these questions that have been coming up lately. So I recently had a client that had um, an FHA loan. Um, this client could not uh, get a conventional loan because their FICO score was a bit low. So they could only qualify for an FHA loan. Now we found a condo that they liked and you know we put in an offer and then the offer got rejected and they said that um, it won't go FHA and my client was a bit confused and um, I explained the reasons why um, certain properties won't go FHA and this is a common question and there's a huge misconception that I got a pre-approval letter for this amount of money now I just got to go out and find the house that um, is selling for that same amount of money and it's not quite that simple so I just kind of wanted to explain some of the the hurdles that you have um, out there in the marketplace uh, ahead of time so you know you don't get discouraged or you understand uh, the lay of the law so to speak now Let's talk condos first. So some of the issues that come up in condos is a condo complex might not be um, certified to go FHA um, or a specific um, condo in the complex. That one might not specifically go FHA because of repairs or uh, things of that nature. Uh, another thing that I like to bring up to clients um, that most people are not aware of when it comes to condominiums is and townhouses is sometimes you can't even go conventional um, on those properties because one example would be renters to owners ratio uh, so there's this weird thing let's say that there's 50% of the people that live in this condominium are renters and the other 50% are owners. Most of the time you cannot get an FHA loan on something like that and you also cannot get um, even a conventional. And that's because the ratio is off. So they like to see a lot more owners in a complex than they do renters. They feel like renters um, might not take care of the property as much so there's a bit more of a risk there uh, but if it's all owners they think that you know um, pride and ownership kind of thing they, they, they would keep the, the condos a little bit um, uh, nicer and to a higher standard so I think that's you know the reasoning that the bank has to uh, not allow you to borrow money on a condo that has that ratio so that's uh, some good examples for why a property might not go FHA, might not even go conventional. So now let's talk about a house. Um, a house, for example, uh, a lot of things that I run into that I have to explain to uh, my clients, you know, they might find a house that they love and they're ready to go and they have a FHA loan and immediately I'm noticing things that will not let it pass FHA. So for example, um, peeling paint on the outside of the house, you might not care, but the FHA does care. Or um, a lot of repairs needed, um, safety issues. Uh, some of them are even silly, like, uh, you know, like a porch railing or a um, water heater not being strapped up properly. I mean, some of these things could even be fixed um, before the close of escrow but in order for it to pass FHA before the FHA people go down there and do their um, appraisal and inspection and all that kind of stuff that they do it needs to um, pass all these uh, safety and um, requirements that FHA has now another thing that's a, a hurdle is um, that some people might not mind is conversions for example 
if someone had a garage and then they convert converted it into a bedroom that's really common a lot of people do that and even if it's done to a very high standard it still won't pass FHA just that conversion alone so you really need to be careful and look out for that if, if things look um, like they've been converted or um, if all the other neighbor neighbors have a garage and this house is <laughs> looking like it was built by the same builder at one time it probably did have a garage and now it's you know possible it won't pass FHA so and now let's talk conventional so what are some of the hurdles that would make you not even um, be able to get a conventional loan well repairs you know sometimes if a house is just such in disrepair um, you may not even get a conventional loan if it's not livable or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and some will. Oh, and also, just a side note on the FHA, sometimes you can get FHA, like let's say um, a conversion is kind of a dead stop for the most part, but let's say, for example, if there's peeling paint or something, there is an FHA loan that you can get included with repairs so um, it's a pain in the butt to get that loan I gotta say but uh, it is possible so you know you may look into that if you found the house of your dreams that has some minor repairs that need to be done or even major repairs if you can lump them in with that FHA with repairs loan um, that is an option so back to the conventional um, number one if there's uh, you know major disrepair you may run into uh, problems with some banks. But, you know, I, I found that sometimes if one bank won't do it, another bank may. So, um, you know, do your due diligence and keep hunting until, um, you know, no bank will lend to you uh, on that specific property. Uh, one of the other things I see at times is um, a owner may just really want all cash because he's uh, not wanting things like appraisals to be done or um, a fast sale. He might want to close in 10 days or things of that nature. So sometimes uh, you can't go conventional just because the homeowner doesn't want any kind of loan. He just wants a fast deal. Uh, oftentimes those are at a heavy discount which is a good thing for the seller if you uh, have a lot of extra, I'm sorry, for the buyer, if you have that extra cash and you can uh, purchase a property uh, outright all cash, um, you can even potentially um, refinance it uh, later um, or finance it, I should say, later. You know, buy it all cash and then um, after the close of escrow, because there should still be an escrow, uh, then you finance it after at, at your leisure. Um, some of the other uh, things that come up, for example, and I just mentioned uh, appraisals. So sometimes, you know, someone wants a million dollars for their house, let's say, but the comparables only say that that house is worth 900000 but you really like the house and you want to buy it for a million. The bank may not lend you enough money for you to make that purchase if it doesn't appraise for that amount so what the bank often does is they'll say well since it appraises for this we will give you this amount of money if you have the extra money to cover those funds then you're okay so if you have you know that extra cash that was just laying around and you still really want that house um, there's ways around it, but uh, oftentimes that's another way that even a, a house that's beautiful won't go FHA and won't go conventional. So it can be frustrating at times, but um, I actually like the fact that these rules are in place because they're there to protect the, the new home buyer. So, you know, all of these rules that sometimes are frustrating. Uh, could save you from getting into a bad deal. 
So it's not all bad that they're <laughs> they're there. You know, oftentimes they're there for your own protection. So that's about it for for today. I wanted to make a short video. I think it ended up being pretty long, but uh, there's a lot of good information in there. Um, stay tuned for more videos. Uh, I will be posting them right now. You know, like I said, I'm just in my car doing it because I got a long drive. Um, but uh, please subscribe to our channel. Um, we also have an Instagram and a Facebook. Uh, I'm Vid Katarta with Right Solution Realty, helping you do real estate right.